progress is being made every day on the construction of the senior village. Tonight, we have a look at some of the policies that will be in place for residents next year. Twitter is nothing new to college students, but Elon students are noticing a new trend. It's the latest social media craze, and if you're still confused about it, we'll explain what Pinterest is all about. I'm Scarlett Picard. And I'm Brian Mazzocchi. We're live tonight with all those stories and more. Phoenix 14 News starts right now. Good evening and thanks for joining us. A great deal of progress was made on the new senior village over break and now, inf and new, and now information about the new on-campus housing is being sent out. Elon will have many changes in his housing policies next year. Our Jason Puckett looks into the new upperclassmen in the village to find out what juniors and seniors can expect. Jason. Thanks, Brian. A short walk over the railroad tracks and down Williamson Avenue brings you to the former site of the Firehouse Fields. Now, instead of fields, you find a bustling construction site where the new station at Mill Point is coming to life. Mud, gravel, and plenty of unfinished buildings are all that can be seen on the corner of Williamson and Ballpark Avenue. But by the time school starts next year, the area will look a little more like this. The station at Mill Point, set to open in August, will offer housing for 324 juniors and seniors on campus next year. The station will have the same rules and regulations that apply to students living in the Oaks or other on-campus housing. Yes, we will apply the same city and federal laws that apply to alcohol and for the residence life alcohol policy. If you're 21 or older, you will be permitted to consume alcohol in your room. The policies and price of the station are not new to Elon's students. The station will have housing assistance just like in the Oaks, and though the monthly rent of roughly $630 is close to the rent in the Oaks, for some students, it's just too steep. For, like, for me, price is a very big deal, and I wouldn't be able to live in the station or the Oaks because of the price, and so that would, that would tend me to move off campus. Mark Timmel is a sophomore resident assistant at Elon. He wants to live in the station next year, but doesn't want to pay that much money per month. The only way I could possibly live in the station, or Oaks for that matter, is I have to stay on Res Life because that'll help um, pay for housing. So if I got a residence life position um, at station, I would be able to live there. If Timmel doesn't get the position, he, like every other upperclassman, will have to decide if they want to pay more money to stay on campus or look for housing elsewhere. According to Elaine Turner, the first house will be completed and open for tours by late in March. Other amenities to look forward to include an outdoor swimming pool, a workout center, mixed gender apartments, and access to Elon's high-speed internet and television networks. While construction continues on the station at Mill Point, it's not the only construction project on campus right now. Construction also continues behind Mosley with the replacement of Hardin Dining Hall. There will also be a new on-campus living learning community called the Global Neighborhood, which is scheduled to open in the fall of 2014. Opening day for Pandora's Pies is almost here. The owner hopes to open next Monday, but that date is not yet official because they are still waiting for a health inspection. One fun fact about the new restaurant in the Elon Town Center, the tables, benches, and bar are all made of remnants of Coakley Dorm, which was knocked down after last spring semester. Elon's 122nd graduation ceremony is set for May 19th, and the commencement speaker has been announced. This year's speaker will be Steve Schuckenbrock, a graduate of the class of 82. Schuckenbrock is the president of Dell Services, the global IT services and business solutions unit of Dell. He was the 2010 recipient of the Distinguished Alumnus of the Year Award. On our Thursday update last week, we told you about two classes of break-ins at students' apartments during the winter vacation. On our, our own Don Grenice is live in studio with more. Break-ins are rarely common around a college campus, but one of these cases is now being called a rare one, according to Elon police officers. Over the fence and through the back window. That's how Elon Jr. Chris Dexheimer says the people who robbed him and his roommates got into their house on yeah, West Bollinger yeah. Avenue. It's disappointing. It's disappointing to, to know that people are coming in and you know, breaking into people's houses, taking their property. It's like, you know, it's just a, a comfort thing. You don't get back. According to the police report, the burglars pulled a piece of firewood up next to the house and broke through the kitchen window before knocking down two bedroom doors to get to an Xbox system and two guitars. 
The deadbolt of the back door was broken and is believed to be how the burglars exited the house. I don't feel safe living here at all. It's, you know, it's not really the, the safest place. We don't have the security system that we should. Break-ins can occur any time of the year, but most of them happen like when this one did, while students are away on break. And according to Lieutenant Blackwelder of the Elon Police Department, this kind of forced break-in is rare. Whenever you have someone moving prop, moving items around the house to gain entry, it's, it's odd. Um, and it's very odd to see kicked in front doors or kicked in rear doors or broken glass because that draws attention. Using a piece of firewood to reach the kitchen window isn't the craziest forced break-in that Blackwelder has seen in her six years with the Elon police. Uh, one particular was so brazen that during the break-in, he was hungry, so he cooked dinner at this, this student's house and ate and then collected what he was going to steal and left. While every burglar has their own reason for breaking in, it's common that they take items like game consoles, TVs, and even laptops. Lieutenant Blackwelder encourages students to take advantage of an engraving service the police department offers. You can have your name and even your driver's license ID number engraved into your property, like I did with my computer, so it can be tracked or identified if recovered by authorities. You can also check out engraving pens, like this one, from Campus Security, and they're at absolutely no cost. Back to you. A new year brings new laws to North Carolina. Pharmacies are now required to enter customers into a national database each time they want to buy a cold medicine that contains pseudoephedrine, like Sudafed. Pseudoephedrine is a key ingredient in making methamphetamine. The database will block the sale if the person has gone on a buying spree for the drug. More criminals convicted of misdemeanors will be housed in county jails instead of state prisons. The goal is to reduce correctional costs and prevent relapses. The new year also brought a rise in state gasoline tax. The state motor fuels tax grew 3.9 cents per gallon to a record 38.9 cents. North Carolina has one of the highest fuel taxes in the country. And teenagers will have to do a little more work after receiving their learner's permit. Teens are required to log 60 hours of time behind the wheel under the supervision of a parent or other experienced driver. A second log must also be filled out and requires 12 additional hours. Signed copies of the logs have to be presented before the driver can move on to the next level. Tonight in Phoenix 14's Health Watch, flu season is here, but that's not the only illness spreading around. Pertussis, otherwise known as whooping cough, is making its way through Alamance County. This season with several cases already identified at B. Everett Jordan Elementary School. A couple of cases have been um, determined in the southern part of the county. Um, we have, right now, we're still in the process of working through those certain cases and looking at more cases, but um, as of right now, we have 10 probable and seven confirmed cases. The disease is spread through close contact with individuals and starts out like the common cold, but eventually develops into a severe cough. The Alamance Health Department recommends that everyone, including adults, get vaccinated. It's also flu season, and if you didn't get a flu shot this year, here are some other tips for staying healthy. Be sure to wash your hands as often as possible with soap and water. Avoid being around anyone who is sick as they can easily spread the germs. And keep your personal belongings clean, especially your computer and phone, which easily pick up germs from anywhere you take them. Wipe them down with a Clorox wipe. Adderall, a medication used to treat Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, or ADHD, is short in supply and has been put on the FDA's drug shortage list. The shortage is a result of a struggling relationship between drug manufacturers and the Drug Enforcement Administration. The DEA sets manufacturing quotas for drug ingredients each year to control supplies like Adderall. But Adderall manufacturers say they only, the only way to, that they can meet the growing demand for the medication is if those limits are loosened. The DEA is questioning whether their shortage is a shortage at all or whether drug companies are trying to sell more of the expensive brand name drugs instead of generic supplies. The first rabies case of 2012 has been confirmed for Alamance County. The county health department said a skunk was the first case of the new year and was discovered in northern Alamance County. The department is asking anyone with a dog or cat to get it vaccinated against the disease. 
They also advise people to avoid wild animals who behave oddly during the day. Coming up on Phoenix 14 News, when you think of Girl Scouts, cookies might come to mind first. But later in the show, we'll introduce you to one Elon student who knows Girl Scouting is about so much more. Can squirrels tweet? Maybe only at Elon. Coming up, we'll have a look at anonymous Twitter accounts taking over your Twitter feed. And next, a look at the reason Elon still requires prospective students to send in their SAT scores with their college applications. College-bound students in North Carolina have usually been much more likely to take the SAT than the ACT, but a new statewide requirement is changing that. The state is now paying the $49.50 fee for high school students to take the test and will use the scores to measure how much students have learned in different subjects. The ACT tests students in five areas, English, math, reading, science, and writing, while the SAT only tests in math, critical reading, and writing. For years, standardized test scores, though required for college applications, have been a controversial issue, with the debate centering on whether or not they reflect a student's intelligence. Our Kelly Finneran has more on the subject. In 2008, Wake Forest University was one of the first schools to revise their application process, making standardized test scores optional. As a result, Wake Forest attracted prospective students who had demonstrated a high performance in the classroom, despite the fact that their standardized test scores may not have reflected their overall aptitude as a student. Elon still requires standardized test scores as a part of the application process. Greg Sizer, Dean of Admissions, says higher test scores can reflect in a student's grade. I will tell you that the university has done validity studies to sort of compare to look at the SAT scores and then also track the student's performance at the university, and there is a correlation. But test scores aren't the only factor considered on a prospective student's application. There are certainly, without doubt, great students who just perhaps don't perform well uh, on a standardized test, but that's why we admit a range of students um, at the university, so that not only the highest GPAs and highest SATs um, are the students are from the students who are admitted. Dean Zeiser wants hopeful students to know their SAT scores will not define them in Elon's selection process. Kelly Finneran, Phoenix 14 News. According to the Huffington Post, 17% of all colleges and universities in the United States have chosen to make sending in standardized test scores optional. Anonymity on the web is nothing new, but it's a new trend here on campus. Monica Yantosh joins us with more. Leaving an anonymous comment or having an anonymous blog gives people the freedom to say what they want without people knowing who they are. And now at Elon, anonymity is all a Twitter among students. Um, I felt only at Elon, Elon girl problems. Those are just a few of the anonymous Twitter accounts that exist about Elon. Others include KOBC problems, Carolina girl problem, Elon anonymous, and more. First year student Courtney Vaughn enjoys reading the tweets shared by those behind the accounts. They give Elon its own meaning. Somebody's out there tweeting about our own problems and we all get to laugh about it. These accounts are anonymous, but are believed to be students sharing their thoughts about other students, events, and really anything that happens within the Elon bubble. And that can be a good thing. This helps to know that somebody else is also having that problem. Visiting adjunct instructor Adam Hochberg said even an anonymous identity can be revealed. One of the lessons, I think, for people who think, oh, I'm anonymous, nobody's going to find out who I am. Yeah, there are ways to find out who you are. Even President Lambert joined in and used the hashtag only at Elon. Though administrators don't know the identity of those behind the accounts, they know they exist and just want students to be respectful. Abide by the Elon University honor code, honesty, integrity, responsibility, and respect. And so far to date, we haven't seen any anonymous users of any of the social media platforms really abuse that. Vaughn thinks that being anonymous shouldn't mean those tweeting can say whatever they want. I think being anonymous, I think they do have to be conscious of what they're saying. Townsend reminds students that the Elon Honor Code applies to students during their entire time at the university, and it even applies to anything posted on the internet, whether it includes the student's name or is published anonymously. Soon there will be two less stores for Elon students to shop at in Alamance Crossing. Eddie Bauer, a high-end clothing store, has already shut its doors, and right next to it, Christopher and Banks will soon do the same. 
They sell high-end women's clothing, which is on sale right now as the store tries to clean out. Both spaces will be empty by mid-January. Eddie Bauer and Christopher and Banks have been closing stores all over the country for financial reasons. The Alamance Crossing location is just one out of 100 underperforming stores that Christopher and Banks plans to close by the end of January. The rough economy is also forcing one of the nation's department store chains to close several stores across the country. Shortly after Christmas, Sears announced it would be closing 120 Sears and Kmart stores. One of the reasons for closing the stores came from poor holiday sales. The Kmart and Sears here in Burlington are not on the list of stores to be closed. And Starbucks announced they are raising their prices in some areas of the northeast and sunbelt regions of the country. Although the popular grande-sized coffee is not expected to increase in price, a tall coffee will now cost 10 cents more in some places. The reason for this price jump is said to be based on an expected increase in cost per ingredients. Winter term leaves you with a lot of free time. After the break, we'll introduce you to the latest internet craze that can easily occupy your time. Over the weekend, the weather was warm enough to wear shorts and a t-shirt. Will the warm trend continue? We'll have your five-day forecast after the break.